Galaxy X, the Dark Matter Galaxy. Dark matter is a theoretical form of matter. That doesn't mean it's fictional. We've detected it. It just might be different and behave differently from what we expect. Whatever dark matter is, it seems to compose 80% of all the matter in the universe. But in some regions of the universe, that is not the case. In one particular galaxy, there is only 0.01% ordinary matter. The rest is dark matter. And we still don't know exactly what this is. So, let's find out a little more about dark matter and this bizarre corner of the universe as we explore Galaxy X, the Dark Matter Galaxy. Or just another pawn used to further propagate what Many people see dark matter as a weird, mysterious force that's all spooky and science fiction-y. To be honest, we probably described it as such in our previous videos when we were obsessed with sea serpents and the idea that geese built the pyramids. But truthfully, dark matter is merely something we cannot yet explain. That doesn't make it any more magical than the weird rash on your groin you've had for six months. Seriously, guy, you should get that checked out. The reason we can't explain dark matter thus far is that we haven't been able to directly observe it. Dark matter does not emit any kind of light, neither gamma nor x-rays. Or at least we think it doesn't. Observations made in 2017 may lead us to alter this description. But either way, dark matter is very hard to observe using the methods we employ to take a peek at the rest of the universe. As a result, we've had to detect it by measuring dark matter's gravitational effects on objects we can see, like stars and planets and gas clouds. When we look at the motions of all the objects in the universe, our calculations don't quite work out if all we can see is all there is. For the stars and planets and galaxies to move as they do, something else must be exerting gravitational forces upon them. And since we don't know what that thing is, we just made it up and gave it a badass name, Dark Matter. The idea of dark bodies in the Milky Way was first posed by Lord Kelvin in 1884, but it wasn't until 1922 that the existence of dark matter was proposed by Dutch astronomer Jacobus Capitan. Since then, we've made numerous observations to support the idea that dark matter exists in copious quantities throughout the universe. In 1933, Fritz Zwicky studied the Coma Galaxy Cluster and calculated that, just like grandma's at a funeral, it should not be able to hold itself together. The answer, dark matter. In 1975, Vera Rubin and Kent Ford found that the velocity of stars within the Andromeda Galaxy did not change regardless of their distance from the galactic center. Newtonian dynamics says that stars should become slower the farther out from the center they reside. What's making them move so fast? A dark matter halo, which extends well beyond Andromeda's visible edges. Observations of the cosmic microwave background, galaxy cluster collisions, and the formation of large-scale universal structures provide further evidence for the existence of dark matter. So while we don't know what this substance is, we're pretty darn sure it does exist. Swiss astrophysicist André Mader is one of the few dissenting voices. He proposed an alternative hypothesis in 2017, suggesting that dark matter measurements can be explained by the idea that empty space is scale invariant. This means that when empty space is contracted or dilated, its properties should not change. And when Mater's theory is introduced into our equations, a force much smaller and less significant than the gravitational effect of dark matter is produced. Given its ubiquity throughout the universe, this force should be powerful enough to hold galaxies and clusters together, but on Earth it would be so weak as to prove extremely difficult to measure, like the length of the future or the amount of stupid contained within a single member of the Paul family. But the scientific community at large is unconvinced. Astrophysicists, astronomers, and cosmologists resoundingly believe in the existence of dark matter. It isn't a mistake in our calculations, and alternative hypotheses don't quite fit the bill. Dark matter exists. So, what exactly is it? And why is there so much of it in the universe? One theory suggests that dark matter exists on a parallel reality known as the Hidden Valley. 
However, the two most widely accepted explanations describe it as if it were a high school movie from the 1980s, since dark matter is said to consist of either machos or wimps. Macho stands for Massive Compact Halo Objects. You'll notice they included the A from Massive there. Though science guys think they're so smart that they can't even make a neat and tidy acronym. Anyway, machos are objects ranging from small stars to supermassive black holes. And through their possession of ordinary matter, such as protons, electrons, and Jimmy neutrons, they may exist as black holes, neutron stars, or brown dwarfs. All of these objects can be incredibly dark, so when we see the effects of so-called dark matter, it may be that we're merely observing the gravitational pull of machos instead. However, neutron stars and black stars require a supernova to form, and such events aren't frequent enough within the halo of galaxies to explain all the dark matter we've detected. The same goes for brown dwarfs. There just aren't enough of them within the universe to explain dark matter. And nor are there enough brown dwarfs in the KKK's production of Snow White, although that's probably to be expected. The alternative hypothesis is that dark matter consists of WIMPs, weakly interacting massive particles. These subatomic particles are described as weakly interacting because they can pass through ordinary matter without affecting it. It has nothing to do with their pathetic handshakes. These particles have varying levels of mass and are theorized to exist as neutrinos, axions, and neutralinos. Unfortunately, there are problems with this theory, too. The mass of a neutrino may be too small for it to be a dark matter candidate. Axions also have small mass, but they are believed to have been created in abundance during the Big Bang. Neutralinos are bigger, consisting of 30 to 5,000 times the mass of the proton. However, unlike neutrinos, Axions and neutralinos are entirely hypothetical and have never been observed. Great, we're using one hypothetical thing to explain another hypothetical thing. Can't we all just agree that the answer to everything is a giant robot Jesus? Come on, prove me wrong, sheeple. Observations of the universe indicate that WIMPs are the most likely candidate for dark matter, since observations by the WMAP satellite put our universe's matter content at roughly 4%. For every particle of matter in the universe, there are four particles of dark matter. For every horse, there are four dark matter horses. That last part probably isn't true, but who the hell are you to correct me, the space pope? Anyway, after the 4% of matter is considered, dark matter accounts for a further 27% of all the stuff in the universe. The rest is made up of dark energy. But this ratio does not apply evenly throughout the universe. There are areas of dark matter abundance and scarcity, which we cannot yet explain. One of these areas consists of an entire galaxy, Galaxy X, which we believe exists as a dark satellite galaxy orbiting our very own Milky Way. Galaxy X was discovered by New Mexico's Dragonfly Telephoto Array in 2015 thanks to the way it warped our own galaxy's atomic hydrogen disk. Its mass was estimated as 1% of the entire Milky Way, making it the heaviest satellite object in orbit around our galaxy, the others being two Magellanic Cloud Dwarf Galaxies. Yet, while this pair of galaxies are gas-rich and full of stars, Galaxy X is almost starless. Only 0.01% of the matter within Galaxy X consists of stars, planets, and other visible stuff. That's one two-thousandth the amount of matter found elsewhere in the universe. And that means that 99.99% of this dark satellite galaxy is dark matter. Also known as Dragonfly 44, estimates for this galaxy's high dark matter percentage are based on the fact that it could not possibly hold itself together using the small number of stars it has. Observations of the few stars Galaxy X does contain also showed them to be moving at speeds consistent with the existence of more hidden mass than we could directly observe. We think this galaxy may be as large as the Milky Way itself, but if you could visit it, there wouldn't be much of anything to see, given how little ordinary matter it seems to contain. Galaxies with such low levels of luminosity are described as ultra-diffuse, but some cosmologists prefer to call them fluffy galaxies, which I think is like totally kawaii and super cute. Galaxy X was just one of 47 fluffy galaxies found by Yale researchers within the Coma Cluster 300 million light-years from Earth. 
This was where Fritz Zwicky found some of the earliest evidence for dark matter way back in 1933. Based on some notes we stole out of an old man's trouser pockets and also this scientific paper, it's believed the Galaxy X interacted with the Milky Way 600 million years ago. Its current trajectory is sending Galaxy X away from us, and this may explain why it's so full of delicious dark matter. Between galaxies, we think there are regions called warm, hot, intergalactic mediums. When galaxies travel through these places, they lose much of their ordinary matter. Dark matter seems unaffected by this journey, and so it seems feasible the Galaxy X's intergalactic wanderlust may have resulted in its current composition. But what does that do for the math of the universe? I hear you screaming at nobody in particular. If dark matter galaxies like this exist with 99.99% .99 dark matter, then why does the universe as a whole only consist of 80% dark matter? The answer is that some galaxies exist with very little or no dark matter. And we're going to investigate the recent discovery of one of these in our bonus video, The Dark Matterless Galaxy, which you can watch over at patreon.com slash strange mysteries now. For a $2 monthly pledge, you'll gain access to over a hundred bonus videos. Just watch this. You believe. What do you believe in? You believe in your beliefs, otherwise, why would you believe them? You are free to believe whatever you want, just like you are free to think whatever you want. Free will is what allows you to be you. The beauty of free will is that it allows you to believe in free will. And nothing can ever take that away from you. Heart, don't fail me As humans, we are the pinnacle of life on Earth. The species at the top of the food chain. It is even us who controls the fate of the Earth. And it is we who are the puppeteers manipulating the strings of reality so as to coerce it into whatever we so choose. If you believe that. But what if I were to tell you that there is a form of life, an entity, if you will, that is greater than us? An entity that controls us simply by giving us the illusion that we are the ones in control. What if I were to tell you that every facet of your life, including your destiny, has already been predetermined, and that you, no matter how hard you try, cannot and will not ever be able to change that? Would it be uncomfortable for you to accept that you play no role and have no choice in choosing your own destiny, beliefs, opinions, feelings, actions, or thoughts at all? But that instead, you are just another pawn used to further propagate whatever the true and ultimately mysterious purpose of whatever these beautiful, selfish, lifelike entities wish to achieve. It's only uncomfortable if you believe it to be true. And isn't it only uncomfortable if you choose to believe it's uncomfortable anyway? So which is it? Either your predetermined fate is to safely remain in the dark where you can bathe in blissful ignorance, or you can choose to indulge your curiosity not knowing what the outcome will be. Even if it causes you to lose touch with that one very precious idea we all fight to be sure of, no matter how detrimental that fight may be to us, no matter how much pain we must endure because of it, and no matter how many lives may be sacrificed because of it, including at times our own. The same idea, whoever they are, whisper in our ears so much that we forget that it is they who are the architects of it, of this illusion, reality. Join our $20 premium video tier on patreon.com slash strange mysteries and watch our latest premium video, The Nature of Itself. But only if you choose to.